Right, hello, welcome back to another video. So, this is sort of part two of the Fox and Major. So, in the first video, we made a bell housing shield to go around the flywheel and clutch. And this is the shield that we made. If you haven't seen it, go and check out the previous video where we made that. But what we're on with now is splitting the engine away from the gearbox. So the whole front end away from the back end. And the good thing about these old tractors is they're very simple. There's not much holding them together. So there's only, there's M4 bolts there. There's these like support frame underneath. They're like big long top links. So there's just them to remove. There's no bottom sump bolts because the it's only the top half of the bell housing that matches the tractor. So there's no bolts around the bottom. And obviously there's the top bell housing bolts. I've already got three of them out from when I took the battery tray bracket off. The fuel pipe to take off, like the main feed pipe, there's a return. That's all there is on this side. Then on this side, we've got a steering, steering rod. We've got them same four bolts. We've got the wiring loom, but that's been made on a plug, so that's good. There's one wire there that goes to the start motor. There's another wire there, but it's got a spade connector on it. And then there's just this pipe for the boost gauge. Well, there's a few pipes there, a few wires there that go to the fuel pump. But other than that, that's all there is to take it in bits. So it should only take half an hour to split the tractor. So what I'm going to do is put a bottle jack on top of that block of wood just to jack up the front of the gearbox and then, then I'll set that axle stand up and I'll jack the front up underneath this frame. And I've made these chocks of wood to go in the axle at both sides to stop it dipping out, stop the engine tipping over. And then these are the clutch plates we're putting in, these ceramic paddle clutches. Now these will, they'll be a bit to machine off the centre of them because they're designed to only like have one drive plate on the input shaft, but we're putting two drive plates on the input shaft. So when they're stacked on top of each other like that, there'll be an intermediate plate to go in the middle. So I'll have to skim some off the top so there's only like 10 or 8 mil gap in between there. But that depends on how thick the intermediate plate is, but we won't find that out until we get the tractor in half and the clutch taken off the flywheel. So yeah, we'll uh, start taking it in bits. Right, so that's everything from the front to the back disconnected now. There's just big bolts to undo and then a few bell housing bolts and then it should come in half. So that's taken me about 15 minutes to undo everything. Right, so I've got all the bell housing bolts out now. I've got trolley jack under there and it clamped on. I've got the bottle jack under there to hold the gearbox and then I've got an axle stand under that as well. Um, it would be easier if I had a proper splitting rail but I've never got around to making one yet so this is this is how I'm doing it got my chocks in the front so that can't tip over so there's just them big bolts to undo now and hopefully they're loose but hopefully the chassis rails will spring out enough for it all just to wheel away It's starting to come apart now, but the gap looks 
a little bit bigger at the top than it does at the bottom. So I have to let this jack down a little bit, I think. Right, so there we are, it's in two halves. I'll get some axle stands put under there first before I do anything else. Then I can uh, have a look at the clutch. Right, so I can have a look at the clutch now. I can see that it has got organic plates in it. So you've got one drive plate, another drive plate at the back of there, and then this intermediate plate that drives off these uh, stands. Now with these gearboxes, there's what you call a long box and a short box, which it's all the same length, it's just where this cross shaft is. On the long box, the cross shaft is further back, which means it's better for fitting a twin plate clutch in because you've got more room you know, between the fly wheel and the, and the cross shaft. But what someone's done with this one to give themselves more room is they've cut the cross shaft off and then they've welded it back on again, but offset. So it's not the way I would have done it, but it works, I suppose. Right, so we'll get the clutch whipped off now and have a look at that. Right, so this is a clutch out of it, them two drive plates. Don't look much wear on them at all, really. That's one of the new plates that's going to go in. The cover doesn't look too bad, there's not any not any serious wear on it. You can see, see it's had stronger springs put in it, that's why it's real heavy to press down. It's this intermediate plate I'm not very happy with. Um, you can see... When you put a straight edge across it, you see it's not flat. This is the other side. Yeah, so I think I'm going to Put it in the lathe and skim it because I'm not happy with that. If I put that back in and the clutch drags, then it's going to be my fault, isn't it? So I think I'm going to skim it. Right, so I've got it mounted in the lathe now. I've trued it up off that surface, but I haven't trued it up off that surface because I shouldn't need to take any off there. I just need to take a bit off that surface. Hopefully there's enough tolerance where the cover goes so I don't have to take any off that. I hope. Anyway, see how we get on. Right, so I've taken half a mil off at this side and it's not taken anything off there. Uh, when I trued it up, it was trued up to 0 0.05 of a mil, so it's a long way off. So I'll take another half a mil off and shouldn't be as far off then. So 
I've got out the la got that out of the lathe now. I mean, the surface finishing brilliant because it's it chatters quite a bit, but at least it's flat now. So I'll have to do the same on this side now. Right, so I started at the middle and I did half a mil depth of cut and I've got to there before I've run out. So we'll do one more pass, start from the middle again, one more pass out until we get until we get nearly to the edge and then I'll we'll just have to leave a little lip because you know, obviously I can't get all the way up to the jaws with the tool. Right, so I've got that out of the lathe now. It was it was awful to machine. It just resonates and vibrates. So the, the cut quality is not brilliant, but I've been around it with a DA just to, to buff it off. And you can't feel any of the, you know, where it looks bad, you can't feel anything there. It feels smooth. So it's nice and flat now. Um, it'll probably warp the first, time, the first time down the track anyway, but I'm happier putting that back in than I was putting it back in before. What I need to do now is put these in the lathe and turn that collar down because because there's two of them that collar would end up touching the other drive plate so you have to turn them down like that so there's you know they're only that deep all right so i've got the drive plate in the lathe now ready to machine a bit off there i've got it on an old input shaft and this input shaft the splines are bent on it so what i do to hold it on tight is Put it on like that, put a bit of tube over the end, and then use a tailstock to push the hub onto the splines and it binds up a little bit with the where the splines are bent, and that's enough to hold it rigid and stop it moving. And then I put the tailstock into the end of the shaft as well, just just to you know make sure the drive plate doesn't come off the end, just to make it safe. And then I'll machine that down. So it's like just level with the head of the rivets and then that, that should be enough. So that's out the lathe now and uh, just leaves me with them splines that I just have to take them off in the ground. Right, so I'm just looking at this input shaft now and it looks like it maybe has a little bit of, of a twist on it. It's a common problem with mages is input shaft's not big enough and then they get a little twist on like that and then the clutch won't release properly drags on the you know on the first plate can't slide properly so it drags that was the input shaft that was out of my major that's what I was using in the lathe you can see how it's twisted that one you can also tell when I put the clutch plate on it doesn't go all the way to the end of the splines now you can see there's a good bit of spline there that it, it's not using I think it'll be all right this time because the intermediate plate is now thinner and I've also machined a little bit more off, off that so it shouldn't be going as far down the spline as what it was doing um, it wasn't dragging before so you know, it's not twisted enough to cause a problem yet so I think we'll just put it back together with that in so the flywheel doesn't look too bad I can feel there's a bit of wear on it but not enough to worry about not for a tractor puller anyway and there's a few little surface cracks little heat cracks but nothing there's no cracks that go all the way through it so i think that'll be all right i'll i'll just i'll maybe tap 
blow, blow them out with airline and tap them out. Just run a tap through them, make sure they're all right. Looks like there's a lot of swarf and shit still in the holes. I might check the torque of the flare wheel bolts as well. Right, so everything's about ready to go back in the tractor now. I'm just wondering about these. These are the stands that the cover sits on. But usually every time I've put a twin plate clutch in a tractor, I usually get one of these set up as if it was just for a single clutch plate. And then you make these stands the thickness of one drive plate and your intermediate plate. When you measure these, these measure 20 mil as they are now. And one drive plate and one intermediate plate measures 20 mil. But I've skimmed like nearly two mil off that. So you'd think they should be 22 mil, but they're not. So I don't know much about these because I've never had to set one up before because I are, you know, I just buy them with strong springs in, but already set up for a single plate. So all I have to do is make these. So whether this has been set up different to, than, uh, than what it would be standard, and that's why these have been not as thick as what they should be, I'm not sure. So I think what I'm going to do is just put it back on the tractor, back on the flower wheel, and see whether it all adds up. And if, if it was up to me, I would have put more paddles in. That's a six paddle. I would have gone with like a 10 paddle or a 12 paddle. From my personal experience, more paddles is better than less paddles. Some people you speak to say less paddles is better because each paddle gets more pressure on it. And then other people say more paddles are better because you have more surface area. But yeah, my personal my personal experience is more paddles are better. Uh, in my Leyland, I've had I had problems with six paddle slipping, and then I, then I went to a to a twelve paddle I think, and it it was a lot better without it never slipped with the uh, two twelve paddles in. But anyway, the customer supplied these, so that's what that's what I'm putting in. Right, so I've got them bolts nipped up. They still need talking up yet, but it's nipped up all right. It's, uh, I don't think the intermediate plate being any thinner is going to cause any problems. So uh, I think I'm talking them up and then just put it back together.
Right, so she's back together again now. All the bolts are in, it's just the bell housing shield to go back on. So that's the bell housing shield that we made in the previous video. I've just painted it with red oxide. The customer was supposed to be bringing some blue paint to paint it with, but he hasn't done yet. I need to get it back together because I've got other jobs to get on with. So it's just gonna have to go on red as it is now, just red oxide. So I'll get that taken a bit and uh, get it put back on the tractor. Right, so that's where we're back together. Bonnet's back on. Fits as it should do onto the uh, latches on the battery box. So we'll uh, start her up and take her outside now and just make sure the clutch is all right. Give it a bit of a test run. Um, I don't want to give it too much of a test run because there's no air intake on the turbo. If it, just my luck, a bit of mud would come off the wheel and go straight into the turbo. The last thing I want is to be putting a new turbo on it, so I'll just give it a little test out in the yard and then uh, if it's alright that'll do. ready for a season of tractor pulling. The clutch works well, it doesn't drag, doesn't bite. It actually feels better than it did before. And whether that's because I've skimmed the intermediate plate or because the stands weren't the right length for the, uh, for the thickness of the intermediate plate before I skimmed it. But yeah, now she's a lot nicer now. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.